Hello everyone and welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. For those of you who don't already know me or for those of you who are on my channel for the first time, hi! My name is Yasmin. So, if you guys have been watching my videos for a while, you would already know that I go to McGill University in Montreal. So the thing is, my most like successful YouTube video or the one that you guys have been seeming to find the most helpful is about the 20 things y'all should know before you move to Montreal. And the thing is, I made that video exactly one year ago and I feel like I've learned so much since so I just wanted to share that with you guys and I also know that so many of you guys are planning on moving to Montreal soon so I thought it would be helpful if I just share 17 more things y'all should know before you move to Montreal before I get started I just wanted to say I post new videos twice a week about McGill Montreal and just some fun daily vlogs so make sure you guys hit the subscribe button so you guys get notified every single time I make a post Number one, you have to do everything yourself. Oh my god guys, I talk about this all the time, but one of the biggest culture shocks that I experienced when I moved to Montreal is the service industry because back home, the lifestyle is all about convenience, so everything is kind of done for you or just made easy in a way, but in Montreal it's not like that because you're expected to do everything yourself. And this can range from little things to big things, but even if you don't know how to do something yourself or you don't really want to do it, it still can be pretty expensive to outsource it so yeah you just learn to do things yourself for example Ikea oh my god guys I talk about this all the time just because it was so weird to me when I moved there but basically when you buy furniture from Ikea you're expected to assemble it yourself like they don't deliver your furniture and send people to assemble it for you for free and if you want them to do that then it can get pretty expensive or another thing if something goes wrong in your apartment maintenance can be so expensive and so unreliable sometimes so you just learn to do things yourself and at the start if you're not used to this it can be kind of annoying and frustrating but honestly looking back at it it really really helps you build on certain life skills because you learn how to be on your own you learn how to do things on your own you generally learn how to do things yourself number two you're gonna find every kind of cuisine oh my god guys okay i don't know if you already know this but montreal is the student capital of north america so you're gonna meet people from all around the world with so many different backgrounds so as a result the city is filled with so much flavor and culture and i'm not just talking about the city and the people itself but the food too so speaking of food this brings me to number three food is generally more expensive here at least compared to what I'm used to back home. So the thing is, there's actually so many ways you can save money on food because Montreal is home to so many public markets where you can find fruits and veggies and meats and eggs and anything you want. And you can especially find good deals if you're buying based on seasonal trends. I would say that in Canada, eating out at restaurants is more expensive. But when I leave Montreal to go visit my friends in other provinces, what I noticed is that eating out at restaurants is relatively less expensive in Montreal than it is elsewhere. Overall, I would say that what can be the most costly is delivering often because sometimes you can Uber Eats a $5 meal and end up paying 20 bucks for it because if you think about it there's the goods and service tax there's delivery fee there's service fee there's 15% tip so it adds up speaking of this brings me to number four tipping is somewhat mandatory I mean in most places it's expected to leave a tip but back home if you didn't it's so normal at our age and even if you did you just leave as much as you want it doesn't have to be 15% but in Montreal it's kind of an unspoken rule that you tip between 15 and 20% even if you didn't like your service number five it is legal to drink at the park so the thing is you can drink on montreal streets or alleyways but it is legal to consume alcoholic beverages at the park if and only if you are also consuming a meal with that drink so speaking of this actually brings me to my next point number six 
The SAQ and the SQDC are considered essential services. So for those of you who don't already know this, the SAQ is the province's liquor store and the SQDC is the province's cannabis store or weed dispensary. Basically, starting fall 2020 until winter 2021, Montreal was on strict, strict lockdown. So all of the non-essential stores were closed, literally anything you can think of even if you'd go to the pharmacy and you want to buy something that's non-essential they won't let you check it out like we were on strict lockdown so because of that i would go on walks a lot and every single day when i would walk i would notice that there would be a line outside of the sqdc or the saq that would fill up a whole block or even two and that's when i realized that they were still open because they were considered essential services during the pandemic but anyways i did a lot of research on this and it actually sparked up so much debate because some people would argue that we as a community should be thinking about why we need these services so much, why they're considered essential. But on the other hand, some psychologists would argue that for whatever reason, there are people who consume like alcohol or marijuana regularly and to suddenly cut them off in such a psychologically disturbing time can be so dangerous for these individuals and for the community. So yeah, I don't know. I just like read a bunch of stuff on that and I thought it was really interesting. So the more you know. So speaking of marijuana, this brings me to point number seven you will always always get a few whiffs of weed here and there when walking down the streets in montreal so the thing is like i said i like to go on walks as often as i can and my walk is not complete until i catch a few whiffs of weed here and there like it is almost a guarantee even if i'm not walking sometimes if my neighbors are having a little party i'll i'll smell it all the way to my apartment oh my god let me actually tell you guys about this so back home these things they, they don't exist and it is not normalized at all at all so when i came to montreal it was kind of a culture shock how public and normal it was but what i love about the society in montreal is that to each his own you know like just because these things are normalized doesn't mean you have to smoke or drink if you don't want to like it's so whatever like especially being in the party scene in uni I've never ever once felt peer pressure to try something or do something that I didn't want to try or do, you know? Speaking of, this brings me to number eight. Montrealers smoke a lot. Like, it does not matter the weather. Even if it is negative 30 degrees, you will always find people standing outside enjoying their cig or whatever. Like, I'm not saying this is everyone, but culturally, it's pretty accepted and kind of widespread it's kind of like how in the middle east not everyone smokes but hookah is a cultural thing you know also fun fact smoking indoors in montreal is not a thing like i'm pretty sure it's illegal in most places number nine traveling within montreal is so accessible and affordable so the thing is even if you're not living in downtown montreal as long as you're next to a metro station or a bus transit line you are good to go because you can literally get from one end of the city all the way to the other for like three bucks and compared to the rest of canada montreal actually has the lowest average costs for public transport and even if you don't want to use public transport you're fine because this actually brings me to number 10 montreal is a walking city oh my god guys montreal is so student friendly like you really don't need a car everything is so nearby whether it's grocery stores your uni uh shopping centers clubs restaurants bars whatever like back home i couldn't even walk 10 minutes to get to places but you get so used to it that you start to enjoy it and you know especially because you're walking around so often a 30 minute walk starts to feel like a 10 15 minute walk anyways this brings me to my next point number 11 be prepared to walk uphill so the thing is montreal is pretty much built on one big hill so you just have to be prepared to be walking up and down many inclines and the thing is it's a serious leg workout so you are really gonna appreciate it and honestly in the beginning like i said i wasn't used to walking around so i would get tired but your body gets used to it so quickly and once it does it's it's honestly not a problem at all number 12 
Montreal is always under construction. Oh my god guys, don't get me started. Literally when I first moved to Montreal, every single person told me there are two seasons, winter and construction. I think that tells you everything you need to know. It seems like something that is never ending within the city, especially during summer. And the thing is, during summer, sometimes the major touristic streets will be closed off and pairing that with the construction, there will be traffic on every single corner. Speaking of driving and traffic or whatever, this brings me to point number 13. In Montreal, if you're not paying attention, the drivers will hit you. Oh my god, guys, did I ever tell you about the time that I got hit by a car? Okay, so it wasn't like I got into a huge car accident, but basically what happened was I was at the traffic stop and I had the right of way so I could walk. But before I walk, I always check left and right just in case and there was no one in the street. So I'm walking and halfway, there's a car that pops up out of nowhere, speeding for its life right at me. And everything just happened so quick I literally thought that I died for a second like I couldn't process what was happening and it just hit me a little bit like I wasn't injured or anything but still what was that I used to always say like I'm not gonna run on the streets the cars will just stop they won't hit you but in Montreal they will hit you number 14 you will really really start to appreciate nature like guys I used to never care to be outdoors as much as I did when I moved to Montreal because it's a city filled with nature and color and the most beautiful radiant energy and I can literally spend every single day outside at the park having a picnic with my friends and not get bored. Oh my god, what I love about Canadians is that they learn to adapt to all the seasons like even when it's harsh winter, like negative 25 degrees, you can still go outdoors and find fun activities to do. And I don't know, I just love that even if I don't always want to be outdoors, it's nice to know that I always can. Does that make sense? Number 15, local coffee is so much better than Starbucks. Oh my God, guys, like obviously you're gonna find a Starbucks at every corner, but if you're living in Montreal and you're not living off of local coffee, you're doing something wrong. I cannot emphasize enough how much I love coffee culture in Montreal. Like I used to never ever drink coffee until I came to Montreal. Number 16, you have to go to a lot of different places to get your things. What I mean by this is that there's not one big Walmart type store where you can get all your things at once. Like back home, you can get a TV and a tomato from the same place, but in Montreal, you have to go to Pharma Pre for your hair products and Provigo for your groceries and Canadian Tire for house stuff and then another place for stationery and blah 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 okay last but not least number 17 this is just a fun fact that I saw online and I wanted to share with you guys but by law no building is allowed to be taller than Mount Royal and I actually think that's really cool because it preserves nature and urban environments and I think that's what to me makes Montreal really special like you're living in the city but also you feel so close to the earth like you feel so close to nature if that makes sense. But anyways guys, that concludes the 17 things that you guys should know before moving to Montreal. I cannot even string together words to explain how much I love Montreal. It's my favorite place on earth and it's really, really grown to be my home. And if you guys are planning on moving to Montreal soon, then get ready for so much fun in your life. So that is the end of today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it just as much as I enjoyed recording it. And as always, if you guys did enjoy this video, make sure to like, comment, and share this video. Make sure to hit the subscribe button down below and the bell notification button so you guys get notified every single time I make a post. I'll see you guys next week.